Next, we give a name to the inverse images under the exponential map. So the complex logarithm log z is defined to be the inverse image of the singleton z under the exponential map. And since the exponential map is never zero, we do have to take z non-zero. And so this just means all w such that x of w equals z. And as we proved in the previous slide, if I have any pre-image, so w naught, uh, then we get all pre-images by taking uh, w naught plus uh, multiples of 2 pi i by integers. So log z, uh, or lowercase log, is set valued or multi-valued. And uh, we're going to be talking about how, well, if you restrict the exponential to certain sets, then you can take uh, the inverse function, get an actual function. So the when we kind of restrict to particular pre-images, we will get uh, a function on certain sets. Just a few quick notes. Uh, we'll reserve ln to refer to the uh, natural log on the real numbers. So ln of x or x positive will be the usual natural log that we're used to from calculus and uh, we'll define the imaginary part of log z in a second, but we'll see that log z will be uh, natural log of modulus of z plus i times the argument of z. We'll define argument in one second, but the point is the real part will not be uh, set valued. It'll always be natural log of z because if I have a pre-image, of the exponential map, then its real part is determined because e to the w equals z, so it's, uh, so it's modulus So we get that uh, the natural log of modulus of z has to agree with the real part of w. So I just want to point out that natural log of 1, as usual, is 0, but log of 1 will be all preimages of 1, which would be 2 pi i z. It's this whole set. And we'll define the argument in a moment, but it's basically just going to be the imaginary part of the log, and so you get 2 pi z. So the argument function, as I said, is defined to be just the imaginary parts of log z, which again, it's going to be set valued, and it's all y, such that e to the i y gives me z over modulus of z. And again, if I have one of these values, I can get the rest by translating by multiples of 2 pi. And this was some stuff that I just said. OK, we're going to be interested in actual functions and not set valued things, which can be hard to work with. So for right now, I'll just say that a function f on, say, an open set is a branch of log if it uh, takes values in this preimage. So another way of saying it, it's a function such that that inverts the exponential on that domain. Uh, we'll be particularly interested in branches that are actually continuous, and we'll talk about those in a second. But here are some special branches. Uh, the principal branch, which we write with a capital L, so the principal branch of the logarithm will be the inverse function of the exponential function restricted to one of these strips of length 2 pi. So it'll be uh, r cross the interval minus pi to pi. And this is the open interval. Before, we had kind of a half open interval. This is so that we have an open set. 
Uh, exponential function is invertible on this set, so I can have the inverse function. It's defined as an inverse function, and it will map the uh, complex plane minus the, I guess, non-positive real numbers to the strip. Why is it the non-positive real numbers? Well, it's because we're missing points of the form e to the x, e to the i pi. Uh, as we said, e to the i pi is minus 1. So we're missing uh, all negative real numbers, and uh, we can never exponential never equals zero, so uh, we're missing the non-positive real numbers here. And this is just the principal branch. You could write down all kinds of other branches by taking, restricting the exponential map to the real numbers cross some other interval of length 2 pi. So another branch that you might consider would be exp restricted to r cross 0 to 2 pi and take the inverse function. And I'm just writing that says log tilde temporarily. I guess there's not a, a standard name for this branch of the log. But here we're missing points with argument 0. And so, and we're also missing 0 in the domain. So we get the complex numbers minus the non-negative real numbers, and this will map onto this strip, so it maps. So here we're kind of missing this line, and so we map the plane minus the non-negative real numbers, and we're mapping them onto this strip. Okay, and we can define the same types of things for the argument, and this is no big deal. We can define branches of, of argument, so a function u on, say, an open set to the real numbers will be a branch of the argument if uh, u of z is an element of arg z for all z. And so again, this would just mean that uh, e to the i u of z would give me sort of the point on the unit circle corresponding to z. And we can define the principal argument as we did with the log. I'll just take the imaginary part of the principal logarithm. And so this will map the plane minus the non-positive real numbers onto the interval minus pi to pi. 